think he looks a bit strange, but I actually look stranger, funny enough. And that's my own problem. So he gets up and he says, he says, you guys think where you guys come from, I'm the priest, you know? But where, here he said this line? Yeah. I'm glad he has the same line from the other book. Where I, where I come from, you guys are the priests. So I said this last year, I said, you know, the truth is nowadays the world's got so crazy, we're all freaks. But that didn't happen. But this, this year, what I did was say, the music guys, they're the real freaks. And that's what makes them so good. You know, they're, they're uh, special souls who have to deal with an industry that is filled with minefields for the soul. You know, the minefields for the neshama. As anyone can look at anyone who's out there in the music world, you know, it's a real struggle. So what we've done in Australia, since it's a special program, I really mean that, it's a program of fortunate ones. You have to think about that a little bit throughout this year. You know, that, that's a very special way to be, to be in touch with the, the specialness of where you are and to appreciate it, you know. So already this time is different. This year I'm speaking, I know a few of the guys now. It's a different vibe, you know, like last time I didn't know you guys. But what, you, what you're going to get in the next few months, and it's not going to be like every week, because, you know, be realistic. But basically, at least every month, we're going to try to bring a different act, thanks to Rabbi Ari Groen, and, you know, and the Rosh Hashiva course from Yudin. But also, we're going to try and appeal out there to, for some outside support, just to, you know, make it more financially feasible year after year. So please, God, people out there who are ever listening, Will, will sponsor or advertise, however they want to go about it, be in contact with me directly. And please God, we're going to have beautiful shows. We're going to, we first, let, let's just first, the first show of all, last year we started off with Ari Lesser. And we'd love to start off this year with Ari Lesser. The only thing is, he's not in Israel right now. But we made a request to him and he gave a shout out to you guys, it's on YouTube. And he, he please God, will be back in the Holy Land. And when he does, we'll get him. Please. Ari Lesser is the guy who did Boycott Israel. Yeah? So we're going to hopefully get him at least one point during this year, we hope. But what, what's this all about? It's called the Midnight Rabbi Mystic Hour. The only reason it's called the Midnight Rabbi is because I'm the one who's like, making a deal out of it. And it's the Music Mystic Hour because I want you guys to, to attach yourself to something musical that's spiritual and not just stay, you know, like the, the way that we've talked to whoever's hand out in my class, you know. Like, you guys have heard, like, you know, the media world is, like, feeding us a certain idea of what music's about. But obviously, as the Jewish people, really, even though we're in exile, and, you know, we're, thank God we're back in the Holy Land, but we, we don't really have a hold in the whole music scene, you know? Like, my, I, I'll tell you where I come from. I grew up in London, yeah? And um, my uncle and father were, like, at the time where the whole music world was, like, forming itself. In the 50s and 60s, my father opened up the first jazz shop in England, and my uncle was one of the first major promoters for Pink Floyd and Rolling Stones, and was their first, you know, organizer for venues where the tickets were like 10p, 50p, you know, that's like nothing. And you try to go to a Rolling Stones concert nowadays, it's like a few hundred dollars, if that. Yeah. So it, it, it's an industry which is growing, and my family are a big part of it. But we can see it's also fallen as well because the whole industry has changed and it's become an industry of corporate business, it's become an industry of performance, which really, because with CDs, the whole music business, the records back in the day, it's all changed. And like, we have to be real that the world's constantly transforming and changing, just like the industry changed. But to grow up, for me personally, to grow up in the music world, to go to the biggest the venues in London and England and events and even a few other countries and meet you know, the, some of the fam most famous musicians in the world, hear them and see them live uh, by sitting in a box or VIP or whatever it was. It was, uh, you know, I was young, but I was, you know, picking up and, uh, on that vibe. And that power that exists in that whole music scene was very obviously close to my heart. So the question is, like, when I became more spiritual, I had in my journey, like, a few of you guys here, like, you look familiar, so you've all heard the story. So the, the journey that I personally had from, you know, leaving that world a little bit in terms of the, you know, the lifestyle and, and uh, you know, the business that I could have entered into and didn't, that I was able to, to, to seek out a path that, in my opinion, is like 
you know, obviously everyone has their journey and no one can compare. I can never be as good as speaker as Rabbi Wengland, and I can never be as good a musician as, you know, one of you guys. But everyone has their, what they, they've become successful in. And I feel like, for me, like, just the tap and make a big journey, a big effort to try to find the spirituality in music as part of my, my thing. So one of the things I did was look into the music, the Jewish music world, and look for acts which I consider sincere people, role models, people that will inspire, people that when you listen to them or talk to them, you feel like you're like, you know, with the cool person you can relate to and look up to. And not just someone who's out there in the music business making money out of you and doesn't care nothing about you. And the only reason he's happy to sign something is because he knows it's making more money. It's, that's all his head's into. And he's into the commercialism of it and into the whole corporate side of it. Even if he says he doesn't want to be and he tries to act like he's rebelling against it, that's also part of the business. You know, like, bottom line, it's become a bit of a, you know, like you call it showbiz, it's become a bit of a show. And to find sincere people in the whole scene that are holding on a spiritual level it was a big challenge. So we managed to last year host some really good, sincere, talented musicians so I feel good people for you guys to connect to, not just as musicians, but as people as well. And they really blew the guys away last year. And so we're blessed, hopefully this year, to have a similar lineup. But this year we're already starting off with someone different. Not Nissim, not, not Ari Lesser, but Nissim. Nissim, I want you guys to really spread the word amongst all our friends. Everyone should be here. Right now this is a pretty good, you know, this is, this is good. So we want the whole place, like every chair, like you had Rosh Hashanah or something. I know it's, he's not the king, this guy, but he's, he's coming as special for us. We're going to set him up, he'll do a show for us, we'll make some space. You know, we have to get it ready before he turns up. And he's going he's gonna to blow you guys away because his journey is so powerful. Before he even, like, you know, s sings a word, he, he, if you look up Nissim, you'll see on the, you know, online everything's available now. And you'll see that this guy is like, is what about, what mysticism is about, one of the most important foundations of mystical teachings in Judaism, and we all need to know this. It's about turning darkness into light. It's a powerful concept in the Zohar from Shem Yochai, and Rav Shem Yochai was, we talked about this last year, I'm not going to repeat that whole idea, but I'll just to sum it up very quickly, the idea that there's a flow, a divine flow into the world, and in each time period there was needed certain revelations so the Jewish people could stay alive and with it. And we see that one of the most powerful tools is to be able to attach ourselves to the, to, to, to the light that's in that generation. And in our generation, where there's a lot, a lot of darkness, we need a lot of light to counteract it. So God knew that, our Creator, the one who made the world, knew where we'd be and is with us, is very close to us. And he knows that we're going through a very dark time. So what's he going to do? He's going to give us certain inspirations that our generation can relate to. And it's going to give us the fuel and the, and the, the inspiration and the, the enlightenment in the right way to light up this darkness. And to turn specifically the darkness into light. That's the real point. Not just to be very spiritual and run away from the world. But to know how to deal with the world and turn it into light. So Nissen's one of those guys who came from the streets, and you'll, you'll hear his story a little bit, either look it up, or maybe even talk about it, or you'll hear it in his words. But the bottom line, he's an example of that, and that's a powerful tool to take the music of the world. He's a, he's a soul singer, he's a rapper, he's, a, he's an inspiration, his, his voice is beautiful, his, his raps are, are brilliant, and you know, he's, he's up there with the top rappers, even though he hasn't got to the top of the industry yet, but in terms of his talent and ability. And he is starting to make a name, and we can be part of that process to help him, you know, have a step into Eretz Yisrael. It's his first time visiting Eretz Yisrael in his life, and he's dreaming about this. We're, we have to understand how excited this guy is. We take it for granted a little bit. I don't know if you guys came to Eretz Yisrael before you came to Australia. I assume you all did. Yeah? Guys, you all here before? Yeah. yeah. You did? Wow. Okay, wow. So you guys must have been really excited. So you can have a little bit of a feeling of like an older guy coming and he's transformed his whole life. He didn't even grow up Jewish and he's transformed his whole life to Judaism, to spirituality and truth. And he's coming to Eretz itself for his first time and like, you know, heard stories and dreams. And we're going to be the, one of the first people to host him. And it's an opportunity like to get into it, to make him feel welcome, 
And so it's like a, almost like you could say it's a mis- mitzvah of Nasi Solchem, which is learning about Abu Nabinu, who just passed away, and all his light, or Avram, it says in the Svarim, it, it was a light to the Jewish people, a light to the world. And we have to like do that when Nisim comes, we have to be friendly and be there and be into the show. And it's, it's going to be a show. He's an he's a artist. He's not. He's a talented guy. You'll see. So we'll, we'll, that's the first act, and it's 17th of November, Sunday night. Yeah, guys, you've got that. 17th November, Sunday night. We're going to start hopefully around eight o'clock. And I want I want the guys to be here before to help set up. And so when he turns up, there's a little bit of a presence, not walking in here by himself like some of the guys did last year. It should feel like you know you're anticipating this guy, make an effort to make him feel welcome. It's a very important thing. When Yosef Kaduna comes, he wouldn't care if there's nobody here. He'll just walk in as a humble guy. He's going to be the next step. So he's going to come Hanukkah. Yeah? So now you're going to ask me, what's his message? His message, his message, Yosef Kaduna, is for me the top of the whole music world. And I, I've, trust me, I've, I've heard the most unbelievable musicians in my life. Like, I, like my, I can't even verbalize it. Like the talent I've, I've seen growing up some of these jazz musicians I went to and uh, just unbelievable guitarists and clarinetists and you know every kind of instrument the talent is just overwhelming like I remember one guy who could like literally talk from 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 the instrument he was talking on the instrument there's such people they can verbalize words with their music it's so talented that's all good never too late we just introduced this is why a few guys are coming up we introduced um, this in it's coming the 17th of November He's about the summer, turning the darkness into light. Second, Yosef Kaduna. Yosef Kaduna is a local Beit Shemesh guy. And he has his journey. I don't know too much about his past, but I do know that he's gone on his own journey. And he's come to a very high level spiritually himself. But what I want, want you guys from Yosef Kaduna yeah, is, is to realize it's Hanukkah. It's a holy time. It's the first night of Hanukkah. It's a very special light comes down the first night of Hanukkah. We're talking a lot about light. Music's very connected. This idea of, of taking the physical and connecting it and bridging it spiritually, this is what music's about. Like, I don't know if you realize that, but like, a person's built with nefesh, ruach, and shama. He has different parts of his soul. And the nefesh is more connected to the body, like, you know, we like to do mitzvahs, we like to do things, ashrena, we do chesed. But then we have a part that's more to do with the emotional world, the heart level. And that's more to do with the ruach. The, the energy, the ruach, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the ruach, it's hard to translate it. The, the vibe, you know, good vibes. So music, the Yosef Kedun is going to come and it connects you up to more the soul and the shaman, the more intellect, and it spiritualizes you a little bit. And that's, that's a big part of music, to be that bridge. That was one of the first things I ever heard when I went to Svat all those years ago with my long hair and earrings and who knows what. And I walked in and this guy was telling me, Music's the bridge to the higher worlds. Music's the bridge from your physical body to the spiritual worlds. And that was one of the first things I ever heard, and it's like, wow, that's really beautiful. Especially in Svab, and it's you know, such a high place. You really feel that in the hills and stuff. So Yosef Kudun is going to bring that vibe, that very spiritual vibe. He happens to be a part of the group of Breslov, which happens to have a very big you know, connection to Ruach and to Aish and to fire, to, to, to get you guys fired up. It's Hanukkah. And we want you guys to really get into it. Last year the guys went crazy. They were, they were really dancing and they were singing his songs. By the end. But you can have a better preparation, guys. You can all check out his music before he comes and listen online a little bit. Yosef Kaduna, instead of listening to whatever else you're listening to, just listen to Yosef Kaduna. Get into his songs, especially the song Sheila Malas. It's a beautiful song. It was a big hit in the end of the 90s. Big, big hit in Israel. In the whole world, people were singing it everywhere. It was a time of danger for Israel. He sang a beautiful song about protecting the Jewish people. So anyway, so we, we're going to connect to Yosef Kaduna. That's going to come the first night Hanukkah. Yeah? Guys, you with it? Alright, then, we're just getting a schedule down. I want to get you guys 